Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be going through the whole of Edexcel GCC Chemistry Extracting Metals in Equilibria. This is quite a nice short topic looking at the reactivity series and loads of different displacement reactions. If you'd like to follow along with this video, over on my website you can download my notes. The reactivity series of metals, and this orders metals from the most reactive to the least reactive. So we start with metals like potassium and sodium, which are really, really reactive. And then we go down to metals like silver and gold, which aren't. Now this orders them depending on how well they oxidize. So in the last video, we looked at the words oxidation and reduction. So we said oxidation can mean the loss of electrons and reduction can mean the gain of electrons. Now we're gonna give them another meaning. So oxidation can also mean the gain of oxygen. And reduction can mean the loss of oxygen. So metals at the top of the reactivity series oxidise really, really easily. Now you might notice that I've added two non-metals, so we've got carbon and hydrogen in here. So any metal above hydrogen in the reactivity series will react with dilute acids. Potassium at the top will react really vigorously, it will have a really big reaction, and then iron, which is just above hydrogen, will react much more slowly. The top four metals can also react with cold water. So potassium, sodium, lithium and calcium can react with cold water. And again, potassium will react the most and calcium will react the least. If we react a metal plus water, we get the metal hydroxide plus hydrogen. So if we react sodium with water, we'll get sodium hydroxide plus hydrogen. Now we're going to look at displacement reactions. So let's look at an example. If we react calcium with zinc sulfate, we'll end up with calcium sulfate plus zinc. So the calcium and zinc have just swapped places, and this is called a displacement reaction. Now because calcium is higher than zinc in the reactivity series, it can take its place, so it becomes calcium sulfate, and the zinc is left alone by itself. Now this is a redox reaction. And this is because we have oxidation and reduction happening at the same time. So calcium is oxidized as it loses two electrons to become a calcium ion to be part of the calcium sulfate compound. And zinc is reduced as it has gained some electrons to become normal zinc atoms again. Now it can get quite confusing with the different meanings of oxidation and reduction. But you need to look at the context we're looking at it in. So if we're looking at a reaction where oxygen is involved, we're probably looking at the gain and loss of oxygen. But if we're looking at a normal chemical reaction or something like electrolysis, then we're usually talking about the loss or gain of electrons. So you really need to look at the context of the words being used in. Now different metals are extracted in different ways depending on how reactive they are. So anything above carbon in the reactivity series is extracted by electrolysis. Then anything above silver is extracted with carbon. And we'll look at this in a minute. And then silver and gold exist in their natural state. So they're not in ores or embedded within rocks like all of the other metals. They just exist as silver and gold. And this is because they're so unreactive, they just don't exist with anything else. Now we said we'll look at extracting things with carbon. Now we use displacement reactions to do this. Now because carbon is higher in the reactivity series than these metals, it means that we can use it to extract them. So if we have iron oxide and we react it with carbon, the carbon displaces the iron. So we end up with carbon dioxide plus iron. And this is good because we end up with iron by itself. So we can use this to make things. Now you also need to know the symbol equation for this reaction. So we have 2Fe... 2O3 plus 3C is 3CO2 plus 4Fe. Now, sometimes we have low grade ores, and this is when we have a lot of rock but not a lot of metal. So it's not really worth spending a lot of time, money, and effort extracting them when we're not going to get a lot of metal. So, there are two other ways that we can do this. The first is by using bio leaching. And this uses bacteria. Now the bacteria get energy from the bonds holding the ore together. And then the bacteria eventually produce metal ions, which are then really easy to extract using electrolysis. Then the second way is by phyto extraction. 
and this uses plants. Plants extract metal from the soil using their roots. And then they can't really do anything with this metal, so they store it in their leaves. So eventually, over time, this builds up, and then we can burn the plants to produce the metal. So now we're going to look at dynamic equilibrium. So this word equilibrium means to be equal, and this is a really key idea. Now this is the symbol for a reversible reaction. So this means a reaction that can go forwards and backwards. So if we start with A plus B, this can come together to make C and D, but this also means that C plus D can come together to make A and B. So it goes both ways, so we use this reversible sign. Now, dynamic equilibrium means that these forward and backward reactions are happening at the same rate. So let's look at what this actually means. If we have two people each side of a wall, and one of them has six balls, and the person with six balls starts throwing them over to the other person. Now, at the start, this person doesn't have any balls. Once it's got a few, it can start throwing them back over at the person. Now, it takes a while, but once this person starts throwing the balls back at the same rate, dynamic equilibrium is reached. So, for every ball this person throws over, this person throws one back. Now, this doesn't mean that they have the same number of balls. So, this person could have four on his side, and this person can have two. But it means that, that the number that they have stays consistent. Every time this person throws one over, this person throws one back. Now, this can only happen in a closed system. And this is because if it's open, then the products can escape, meaning that they can't come back together to form the reactants. Now, the position of equilibrium can be on the right or the left of the reaction. So this could mean that the reactant side could be made up of 60% of the material, and the product side could be 40%. So this is the idea that they're not balanced, they're just happening at the same rate. The position of equilibrium is on the side with more material, so this would be the side with 60%. Now, three things can affect what side the equilibrium is on, and this is the temperature, pressure, or the concentration. Now, anything we do to the reaction, the reaction will combat the change. So if we increase the temperature, the reaction will do everything it can to reduce it back down. So let's look specifically at the harbour process. Now this is the combination of nitrogen and hydrogen to produce ammonia. And now ammonia is really useful to sell. And if we're trying to make a product out of this, we want the position of equilibrium to be as far on this side as we can possibly make it. Now the forward reaction is exothermic. And this word exothermic just means it releases heat out into the surroundings. The opposite is endothermic, which means it takes in heat. Now, if the forward reaction is exothermic, it means if we were to decrease the temperature, it would move it towards the forward sides as it's trying to make the surroundings hotter to combat this change. So if we decrease the temperature, this will increase the amount of ammonia we produce. But we do have a slight problem with this. This will slow down the reaction. And this is because the colder things are, the less energy they have, so the slower the reaction will be. So we need to find a compromise between it being a low temperature and the reaction still having enough energy. Now we also want to have a high pressure. And this is because in the forward direction has a low pressure. So if we add a higher pressure, the reaction wants to combat this change, so it leans toward the side with a low pressure. Now, a random bit of information that you need to know about the harbour process is that it uses iron as a catalyst. So this means iron speeds up the reaction without being used. If this video helped with your chemistry revision, please subscribe to my channel and check out the other videos I have.